Hello all of you lovely people, Jules here for WhatCulture.com and I want to talk to you today about Anthem, a game that promised so, so much, too much, some might actually say, and delivered an experience that while it can definitely be enjoyed, has been marked as a failure by fans, critics and even the developers themselves. I take no joy in telling you about a project not meeting the mark, I mean, I can only imagine that the comments like this must be so hard for the developers and those associated with it to take, however, think of this not as one one very pale, very bold man railing on a game just for the hell of it, and more along the lines of a cautionary tale. Therefore, if you enjoy Anthem, then more power to you, friends. You know, I'm not going to tell you what you can and cannot like. But this list will detail some ways in which it didn't meet expectations and should act as a wake-up call to the rest of the industry. Also, I must point out that during the recording of this, Jason Schreier of Kotaku did a full expose on the development of Anthem, shining a light on the reality of what actually went wrong. And you might be surprised to that it's not anywhere near as much EA's fault as you might think. But we'll detail this further now, as I'm Jules, this is WhatCulture.com, and today we're looking at Anthem, 8 Reasons Why It Failed. Number 8. Released as a foundation to build on rather than a full experience. If gaming companies aren't careful, the games-as-service model may actually kill the AAA gaming market, just like it killed much of the goodwill that Anthem had when it's first announced. Gamers don't like getting ripped off, and when a publisher openly acknowledges that what you're buying is essentially unfinished, well, there's gonna be some protest. After all, unless a game is free to play, entertaining gameplay can only get you so far. Anthem was released with a severe lack of content, with padded sections that screamed of a rushed production, and we deserve better. The clear drive to get the game out on the shelves has come at the expense of content itself, and we have unfortunately been sold a starter for the price of a main course. The game will eventually be full of content, what with all the DLC coming down the pipe, but for now, it's a little anemic. And to be clear, this isn't just Anthem pulling the shtick, as many other games will often present themselves as offering more than it actually does. So again, this is just a warning and an example. Number 7. Lore Building Done Through Pause Menus Show, don't tell. That's pretty much the core to any good creative writing experience, and one that video games are surely the perfect medium for, as where else could you create the most imaginary worlds out of thin air with their own rules and laws outside of our own? Well, it's a shame that Anthem hides a lot of its most interesting lore and background within its database, which you'll need to pause the game to go and dig through in order to really learn anything about it. Now, games like Dark Souls manage to incorporate its lore within item descriptions in a way that saw players actively looking at everything and for anything to piece the world together. Anthem just forces players to stop having fun in order to get a bearing on what they're actually doing and why they should care. The Elder Scrolls, Witcher, Bioware's own Mass Effect all keep you invested thanks to the lore and the world being developed through interactions with both it and the characters within. Knowledge of different races, regions and more come through dialogue and quests that you take part in, allowing the world building to feel natural and cohesive across the game structure. Anthem, by comparison, just uses lore dumps, and Bioware should have remembered the hard lesson that Bungie had to learn with Destiny. Codexes should be complementary, not mandatory, for understanding a given universe. Number 6. Learning Nothing from Destiny and speaking of lessons that should have been learned from Destiny, Bungie's divisive shooter came out over four years ago and illustrated the rights and wrongs of shared world multiplayer games. What it did right was provide an enjoyable loot-focused shooter with interesting class powers. What it did wrong was basically the same things that is now showcasing in Anthem. The narrative just hasn't hooked people, and I hope that it doesn't take a year for this to be addressed like the Taken King did for Destiny. The grind-focused gameplay has no sign of changing, but as already been a massive point of contention with fans. Now, these problems are years old, meaning that Bioware has had years to address them. And besides dropping the Season Pass model, what actual changes have been made to benefit the user? The question now remains as to whether the player base will hold out until the DLC patches and completes the offering. Number 5. Load Screen Copouts when massive open-world games like Red Dead 2 have a single loading screen during gameplay and you have endless and lengthy ones splitting up every given moment, you know something's not right. Now, I understand that handling multiplayer servers may have its fair share of processing demand, but several minute-long loading screens placed between minuscule tasks such as matchmaking, going to a mission, leaving one, feel more like a development team went down the Your Mum Avenue because they took the easiest and cheapest dirt route instead of pushing the tech further. And 
yes, that is my weird convoluted one per list. Beyond the simple annoyance of it, any momentum the game has got going for it at any time is continually ruined. It might sound like a nitpicky point, but trust me, a lot of time is spent for the game to actually begin. You're also ruining the immersion factor on top of everything else. Games like Anthem thrive when they can engage you and make you feel that everything is believable. Destiny suffered from this too, and Anthem decided to outdo Bungie only to make them problem worse, it seems. Number 4. Cashing in on latest trends over creating something timeless Games like Mass Effect and Dragon Age Origins will continue to be replayed because they are simply great games that will never feel outdated. Their characters and storylines were memorable and were supported heavily in the game, allowing them to grow with the player. However, outside of Cade 6, I mean, how many stories do you remember from Destiny or The Division or Anthem? Probably very few, and that's because these games have decided to run the gambit of cashing in on the shooter-looter mentality. Borderlands is a great example of how to do this right weaving a narrative throughout everything you do, but Anthem just seems too content to stick to the safe route of just churning out shooting segments over memorable story ones. There's nothing timeless, no replay value to speak of, just something you can pick up every so often and never think about again when you're done, which is fine, in theory, but only if you're an arcade game, which Anthem never said it was thanks to promises of changing worlds with rich lore to be lost in. You'll likely experience this lost feeling alright, but in a more aimless, where the hell am I way? Number 3. Bioware was led by the market rather than leading it Now, a lot of people will claim that Bioware simply wasn't allowed to make a Bioware game thanks to the meddling of EA, but upon recent information highlighted by Kotaku, this simply isn't the case. Sure, the game that Anthem would become has got a very, very EA stamp on it, but it was actually Bioware themselves that seemed to have had a lack of confidence in their original vision which led to it becoming the more homogenous product we were finally offered. When the game was first conceptualized, Anthem, then called Beyond, was much more of a survival title, but as the likes of Destiny and Warframe highlighted the successes of loot shooters, Anthem came to emulate a lot of what made those titles successful. Additionally, a lack of focused leadership after Casey Hudson and left meant that as development went on, it closer resembled its peers rather than strike out on its own. Bioware's bread and butter is memorable storylines led by strong characters. Anthem has a few spaced around, but thanks to that initial vision not being followed up on, there's almost nothing in the same vein as their previous titles. The dialogue wheel has just been removed in favor of a more binary system that's mostly just two contrasting options. With no relationship system to speak of, you really need to squint to see how Bioware's identifying markers actually exist within Anthem. Now, I understand a shooter might not need these levels of relationship depth, but at the same time, why did they market the game as being along those lines? The reveals and demos painted a picture of a world very much in the Bioware vein, but this time with guns. I mean, sign me up, cowboy, because that seems ace. It's a shame as I wanted to be so much more invested in Anthem than I actually was because of the storytelling pedigree that Bioware was bringing to the table. Unfortunately, by the time they got to the table, my food was cold and it actually just was the menu again being read out to me. It's a second food tangent I've done today. This is what happens when you have to write and record before lunch. In short, there wasn't that developer identity that would have given the game some soul because there wasn't a single creative director's voice leading the project from front to back. And while other Bioware games feel like heartfelt tales, this had more than a tinge of generic corporate design all over it. Number 2. Largely Amateur Mission Design How did this happen? You've got an impossibly pretty world and undeniably cool javelin suits, but absolutely nothing imaginative set up for them. It's like investing in a world-class sports car only to drive it to and from your job. Where are the thrills? The majority of the mission types are run here, shoot that, or protect the safe point, and it seems that Anthem had so much more to play with and yet has just provided the standard shooter fare. In fact, one of the game's biggest missing selling points, the flight, actually is just little more than a glorified run button which times out and prevents any meaningful exploration. Plus, in combat it gets interrupted so much that it's hard to be seen as anything more than just a repositioning tool. This could have been implemented into the mission structure in a more meaningful way, and so many other shooters both sci-fi and otherwise have managed to make the constant gunplay entertaining through use of memorable set pieces. Anthem just seems to have shied away from this. And number one, the broken loot system. Even if you were willing to forego everything that has just been mentioned, Bioware still seems utterly incapable of making a workable, satisfying loot system. 
for a game who has its loot system as its very foundation. This came through several factors, namely inexperience and technical issues. Bioware had never implemented such a system before, and thanks to the Frostbite engine's tech issues, the devs were forced to test a lot of these new mechanics offline, meaning they didn't get the true experience of how a loot grind was going to feel in the real world, which is just bizarre, right? We all know by now that there was a huge issue recently in the game where an update actually caused a bug to raise the drop rates of higher grade loot. This in turn saw a spike in player base interest and a ton of people reporting that they were having a great time with the game. It's a shame therefore that Bioware patched this back down to its low drop rates once more and left the community complaining. This is indicative of a company trying to test the very limits of gamer patience and to create a gameplay loop that adheres to the barest requirements. Reports are rife of players completing quests only to receive absolutely nothing worthwhile, and time and time again we're now seeing that the new loot system which allows other players to pick up gear for you just fills up your inventory and is ruining the game further. Some players have put in hundreds of hours and have less than 10 legendaries to show for it, and even these might be absolute pants if they don't have the right inscriptions. Game design teaches you that you need to keep players invested through challenge and reward. Anthem gets the challenge right, but totally skipped the rest of the lesson, it seems. However, let this be a lesson to you, the consumer, that this sort of development isn't okay, and while we've taken Anthem to task this time round, it's actually indicative of a much wider trend in gaming. And there we go, those were 8 reasons that Anthem air quotes failed. Let me know what you thought about it down in the comments section below, and if you like this game, sound off, tell us why you care about it and why you want more people to play it, because you know what, this is a bit of a discourse. And speaking of discourse, let's have a quick chat about mental health. I know that some of you might not see this as very important, but it is important to me to talk to people who might be out there listening to this that might be struggling with stuff. Just remember people, that it is okay to take a break, and it is okay, very okay, to not succeed the first time that you try something. Failure is painted as a bad thing in our society, but you learn from your mistakes. And that's an important thing too. So make sure you're giving yourself a break, treating yourself as well as you possibly can, both physically and mentally. And if you need to step away from a project to get some self-reflection, then do it. Listen to yourself. Anyway, if you want to chat to me more, you can do so on Twitter at RetroJ with a zero. And as always, I've been Jules. You have been awesome. Never forget that. And I'll speak to you soon. Bye.